Okay. As we wait for that to load, why am I wasting time? Any questions about what has been up till now? If not, that's perfectly okay too. In that case, we can get right into it. So where were we last time? We made this display. We made everything being possible to be marked with an X. I uh, remember this, whether it's being, if it's displaying X or not, is not dictated by the square, but rather by the board. So as we look at square, we realize something pretty important. It's not doing anything with its state anymore. What does that mean? Well, that means that we don't need a constructor, which we removed. And if we don't need a constructor, what we can do is we can refactor this into a function. So let's take square back to a function from a class. How do we do that? Well, first we write react square function. And instead of render, what was inside of the render simply goes inside of the function. Save, remove, add props as an argument, remove this. Aha, there we go. And if everything goes right, we can reload and it works exactly the same way. Okay, questions? Awesome. There's a big problem with our uh, game right now. We're only displaying X's. It's not called just, you. both players can't have X's, so how do you give one player an X and one player an O? It's a little bit confusing, so let's think about it. Um, we want whatever is clicked to be displayed, which is props.value. So whatever value you pass in needs to be either X or O. Right now, we are simply passing in x or we're setting it rather to x so we need something in our state to give us an idea about who is currently playing so if x is playing is true then it is x who is playing if x is playing is false then o is playing how do we use this idea and implement well here we go we go to handle click we Instead of just setting it to x, we check this dot state dot x is playing. If x is playing, then we set x. Otherwise, we set o. Questions about that? All right. And once we've done this, we want to go ahead and set x is playing to false, or rather not x is playing. Why are we doing this? Because once x plays, then o gets to play, and then x gets to play. So every time a click is made, the player gets changed. Let's look at this in implementation. Let's reload. First, x plays, then o plays, then x plays, then o plays, then x plays, o, x, o, x. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? x won this, by the way. OK. So any questions about that? And just because we can, let's do one last thing. Let's go to our render function here in render under board and say the next player is There you go. So if X is playing, oops, my bad. <laughs> this we've already implemented right here. So our, stat our status is now slightly more complicated. Instead of just displaying X all the time, we're displaying conditionally O or X. Let's take a look. All right, so next player is O because current player is X. 
then it's X, then it's O, then it's X, and now it's X. There we go. Now we have a changing, revolving door of players. And of course, as usual, we can always flip it up depending on what display you're more comfortable with. In fact, I'll go ahead to rename this as current player. I think that just makes more sense. Current player is X, X moves, current player is O, O moves. All right, questions? Awesome. Now all we got to do is we got to figure out winning or losing logic. Uh, that logic, we are not going to go to the trouble of writing. We're going to pick up a function from just our notion. That function is already written for us. You can go ahead and uh, read through it and analyze it if you wish. It's not React related. So we're just going to assume that's how it works and we know how it works. Okay. Uh, let's go to Dr. David Berkeley. Go to education. Front end. Go to React to. Yes, still React to. And right here. We're going to copy over this function and plop it down. There we go. And it's going to be a global function. Notice how it's out of any of the classes. Now, how do we use this? Well, we know how to calculate a winner, but this calculating it isn't enough. You probably need to display a winner. So where does the winner display go? Well, it could be here or it could be here, what do you guys think? Should it go in game? Should it go in uh, board? Where should the winner display go? Outside of the board? Yeah, yeah, very good intuition. So there's no reason the display of the board should know when a winner is found. The game should know when a winner is found. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a game right here. What are we going to do with this? Well, first, we're going to make a variable outside of the return const winner. And how are we going to calculate the winner? We're going to say calculate winner this dot state dot squares. Loss. Here's our we've immediately hit upon a problem. We need the squares to declare the winner. But which of these uh, react components maintains the squares? Board, board maintains the squares. Board keeps track of what the squares are because it's inside the constructor of the board class. So a loss, even though it maybe makes a little bit more sense to do it in game, because we need the squares to decide whether we one of born one or not, we have to do it in board. So we calculate the winner, we have a word winner, and then what we're going to do, here is our idea. We're going to change status based on whether we found a winner or not. So if we found a winner, which, is, which means winner is not equal to null, then we're going to display winner is winner. Otherwise, we're going to display current player because once you find a winner, there is no more game. There we go. So once we find a winner, then we're going to display winner. All right, let's see if this works. Look at that. x1 and we've displayed x equals winner well one more thing that we probably want to handle is that once we find a winner no more games we have to stop the game because then the other players cannot keep playing how do we do this oh let's figure that out any guesses
the trick lies in changing handle click because the handle click function is what updates the board. So when do we want board to not be updated? Well, if calculate winner, this dot state dot squares. So if a winner is found, then just return. No need to update the board, just go away. Let's see if that works. Oh my God, I'm losing against myself. There we go. So now we found a winner and look at that. No matter how many times I click this box, it's not gonna update it. It's not gonna put any value in because the winner has been found. There is one other problem though still. Let's reload, I'll explain the problem. So let's say we added something. Look at that. The box once set should not change because O cannot just write over X and change the box like it did so. So how do we implement this? Oh, the idea is yet again in handle click. Um, how do we do this in handle click? Well, let's think about it. What is different between this box and this box? The fact that it has a value. Um, so we're gonna say, if square of i has a value inside of it, which means it's not null, then just return. You are not allowed to go to this changing algorithm that we've written here. You simply need to return. Okay, let's reload. Look at that. No more changing the old boxes. Let's see if I can, well, there we go. And no more changing any boxes either. So congratulations are in order. We have technically implemented a full game of tic-tac-toe in React, which is insane and awesome. Believe it or not, this was not that complicated. We got it done in just about a hundred lines of this, which is pretty cool. So now, Let's talk about installing a few other things and perhaps using them. Uh, one thing you may have noticed is that a lot, all of the CSS of this file is globalized here as index.css. This is okay to do. It's not technically wrong, but personally speaking, I think it goes against the philosophy of React. React's philosophy is that there should no longer be separations based on languages. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it should not be separated anymore. So putting all the CSS, dumping it all in one file and then working on another file doesn't make sense. So it is better than inlining CSS or it's better than putting CSS in one file. You should rather inline CSS. What is inline CSS? It's this thing right here. It's setting uh, at style equals style or stuff like that. Let's inline a little bit of CSS in our grand old function right here as well. We're gonna get to that later, but let's say that I want the text in the square to be of the color red. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put a div around it and I'm gonna set style equals something and the curly parentheses here are to specify what that something is. Now, just like HTML needs to be a little bit different in JavaScript to work, CSS also needs to be a little bit more different. CSS is transformed into a dictionary, a lookup table, keys and values. So here we're gonna make a dictionary. Key, set the key as color, set the value as red, reload and what we should see is that every single thing that is displayed is red. This is better because it does isolate the, the concept of the value being red to the square function only, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so that's why you should inline CSS, not put it in a file. 
There's a problem with inlining CSS, however, as well. It's that it is extremely unclean. Um, this is notoriously hard to read. And uh, imagine if your file gets pretty big, if you were to actually move all of this index.css over to our file. Look at this. Look at the square CSS. That would take, a, take up so much space and be so untidy that it would make all these components super duper hard to read. And that, that poses a pretty big problem. So how do we fix this? Um, well, the core idea behind fixing this is let's make CSS components. We've made HTML components. This right here is an HTML component with JavaScript inside of it. This here is a HTML component that is written in JavaScript. So let's do it. How do you make an HTML component? Well, you have to install something extra. And everyone who has maybe kind of popped off at a certain point, maybe you had to uh, stop somewhere, maybe stuff was not working, you can re pick things up here. How do we do this? We use NPM, we say install, and we install something known as styled components. This is an extra class for us. Um, it's pretty helpful, it's pretty good. Um, the idea behind style components, as I said before, is that uh, we can create CSS components. Uh, how does this work? Well, you'll have to wait, up, wait a couple of seconds for it to load into my project and then we can start discussing it. Till then, any questions, folks? About everything that we've covered so far, anything at all. Would you be able to post this code that you're writing into the notion? Yep, done. Uh, I will do that right after this call. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. As we're waiting for that to install, again, if you have any questions, any whatsoever, I'm all ears. Is there any way for us to open the local host other than typing it into the search bar? Open the local host? Could you or like the the page? This yeah, this page. Uh, is it not opening for you? No, I'm typing it in and it's not opening. Uh, have you made sure you're running npm start here in the I'm terminal? Typing... Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah, Oops. so you want to go to the directory in which you are currently working, this app directory, and you want to run npm start. Okay, and yeah. And that, that's okay. going to start up a local host for you. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. No problem. Damn, that's taking a while.
that's enough of a break for me. As that loads, we probably should discuss something else. No wasting time in this household. Okay. Um, I guess one thing that we could probably go ahead and discuss is handle click and why this works, right? So handle click is a function that's defined under this class, which means that it can be accessed to this. Uh, that's kind of basic JavaScript. But one thing that we often do is we say this dot handle click equals this dot handle click dot bind with this. Oftentimes this is unnecessary, it auto binds, but sometimes in some online um, encoders and browsers, there's a little bit of a problem with recognizing what is auto bounded. So this makes sure that you can handle the function or you can use the function handle click using this dot handle click. Okay, let's see if we got something else we can talk about. I guess I can go ahead and talk about the overall structure of this file as well. So here's how this file works. Game is rendered into the DOM through here. Game does a bunch of things, but also most importantly renders board inside of itself. Board does a bunch of things, but most importantly, calls the function render square on nine squares arranged in three rows. Render square calls the component square by giving it some value and giving it a function called handle click, which is defined here. It also maintains some state, which we'll get to in a quick second. Square goes ahead and displays the squares through a button. Now, when the button is clicked, handle click is executed and it remembers what the value of i is for that particular square because we explained what value it was right here in render square, right here, boom. So, handle click goes ahead and makes a copy of square. And if none of the terminating conditions are true, it sets that square value to that value and changes the player. The way this setting of value happens is through something known as state. State is the idea that any component can maintain and re-render itself based on some values. Here, those values are squares, which is an, an array of nine values, and x is playing, which determines if x or o is playing by setting itself to true or false. Once that is all set, we call set state. Set state re-renders the component in which it is called, here, board. So the entire board is re-rendered. This does not mean that the web page is reloaded, just that that one component is re-rendered. And once that re-rendering happens, the display is changed. Okay, what are your questions about that? I guess I just have a question about like, if, if we have everything on like React.js, then what's the purpose of the HTML and CSS files? Um, these HTML and this CSS file? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great question, excellent question. And um, believe it or not, some projects using React frameworks do go completely HTML and CSS less. No HTML files, no CSS files. The reason that this HTML file exists here is because um, most often React is injected into HTML. So whenever we write some React code here, for example, we write game, we're injecting game into an element known as root. This root is right here. 
So because React is its own language and a lot of um, desktops are not, or most browsers in fact, don't automatically render React. What React does is that uh, when you say like, put it to a, push it to a website or even run it locally, it takes all the React code and transcompiles it down to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. And then it puts it inside of this div right here in between this, this div tag opening and closing. And then that is displayed. In fact, I think if we go to developer tools and go ahead and look at the elements, we should see this in action. Great question. Look at that. There's something inside of here. Let's see if there's something. Aha. Starts looking, is this looking a little bit familiar perhaps? Yeah, I see now. Yeah, this is some cool shit. That's all I'm gonna say. So reiterating one last time, React takes um, all of the React code, transcompiles it down to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. You can see that the JavaScript codes are here, in fact. To the best of my memory, they're in main.chunk.js and chunk.js. It just picks up all the JavaScript, throws it in a file, gives it the appropriate tags. So all the HTML, CSS, JavaScript we actually learned in basic stack, there is nothing new happening here. It's the same thing. It's just in a language most people consider to be more intuitive and easier. Okay, and as for the CSS file, um, I claim that this is bad protocol. It should not exist. All of the CSS should be in line at, at worst in this file instead. So that's just a bad, um, what do you, what the kid, what do the kids call it? A bad look. All right. We have installed styled components. What does this mean? Well, let's look at package.json. Something very interesting is happening here. Look at that. Styled components inside of package.json. What does this mean? This means that we've taken the package of styled components and added it to our project. How does it, how is it added? How does that work? Don't care. It is inside of our project now. We can import and use it. So let's talk about how we use it. Here's how we use it. We use it to import styled from code styled components. Forgive me, I completely forgot if it was a capital S or a small s. So I really need to check. I think it's, it was a small s. I guess we'll find out. Okay. So how does style components work? Well, very, very coolly. Imagine you wanted to create a div where everything inside of that div has red text. You could inline it as we had done here. Here's a better way. What you do is you say const div red. This is just a variable called div red. Nothing special happening here. And then you say styled dot div. And it is followed by these two back ticks. These two back ticks act as our um, curly parentheses, but for styled components. So instead of curly parentheses, we put all our styling inside of back ticks. And then we say color is red, um, text decoration is underlined. Is that gonna change anything? Well. Not quite, we haven't used our component yet. So we use it exactly the way we use every, every other component. Instead of div, we just say div red. Let's see if that works for us. Aha, we look at that. That's the idea behind styled components. Why are style components very, very cool? Because they find a way to make even CSS components. So that idea of templating, it's very, very much so in effect here because this is creating a template of 
and a React component that's just CSS and it takes in whatever you pass in and it renders it according to it. All right, questions about style.dev. All right, then let's talk some more theory because we haven't, we clearly haven't done that yet. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about state and why we go ahead and state, change state by slicing. Why can't we go ahead and say this dot state dot square, this dot state dot squares of i equals x. Oh, why can't we? Let's go ahead and do that. And then we say this dot state dot x is plane equals not this dot state dot x is plane. We haven't used squares anywhere. We can also comment this out and this out. Why shouldn't this work? Squares is not defined. Oh, that one. Okay. Whoops. Let's bring that back. Okay, so you do have a display, Realize which is good news, but let's try clicking on things. Uh oh, nothing's changing. Why is nothing changing? Any guesses? Give me your worst guess. Oh. Guess I'll give you my best guess. Um, there's something known as rendering, the idea of which is taking the code and displaying it on your screen. The idea of re-rendering is changing what has been displayed by changing the code and re-displaying it on your screen. When we wanna click something, what we wanna do is we wanna re-render the page. So when we set state like so, we haven't told React to re-render. So how do you go ahead and tell React to re-render? Well, that's what set state does. Set state is by setting squares to this squares, sets it, and then re-renders the component. So it reloads the component to change the display, which is why we use set state. Let's go back to the set state format and see that in action. Reloaded. Okay, any questions about that? I think I'm uh, oh, sorry. I think no, I'm no, no, still no. a little confused on like what exactly like is going inside the brackets. Uh, like this right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. Awesome question. Love it. So, um, what set state accepts as an argument is a dictionary. The dictionary maps the key that is inside of this dot state squares and y is playing to the new value you want to set that key as. Here we want to set it to, actually this is a bad variable. Square is updated. You want to set squares to be squares updated, which is this squares value changed. And you want to set X is playing to not X is playing so that the other person is playing. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Um, why does only sending one of them as an argument work when you have two things in state? Well, set dot state or set state is very clever. It takes in the dictionary that you've passed in, changes all of the values inside of the 
inside of the dictionary and leaves all the other values. So even if you just did this, squares would update and X is playing would still remain whatever it was. Yep, okay. The things we need to do one more thing. So we've uh, set board row as a div. Let's change that. Let's instead make an unordered list out of board row. Oh, that is not, <laughs> there we go. Why not, right? They're all technically the same thing. And this should be now a list item, list item, list item, list item. and one last. Okay. Ugh. That's horrifying because our CSS doesn't agree with our. Um, HTML. So, whoops, let's not do that. Never mind. For, forget I said that, folks. How the CSS would handle it. RB. Okay, never mind. Instead, let's go ahead and make a list of our own. This is some pretty vanilla HTML. Y'all should be kind of comfortable with this. Okay. And now we got an ordered list with four elements being that say these texts. Oops, something got changed. Why well, did not intend for it to happen? Sorry, folks. Typo. Reload. There we go. Look at that. Lovely. There is a little bit of a problem, though. If you go to console, you see a bunch of these errors. Now, a really good idea would be to handle these errors. Errors are not nice, even when they're warnings. We don't want them. So it says logo is not defined, app is defined but never used. That's a simple problem. We can just comment out whatever is never used and reload, and that should fix everything on this end. Let's see if that works. Okay. Logo is defined but never used and app.js. Go ahead and comment that out. We like to have no errors because it because it means that nothing has gone wrong and nothing is extra. There we go. Lovely. So now we have an errorless program. But what's left to do? Well, remember that display we just did right here? We're gonna change it up. For display asterisks. This is a little bit of a recap. How do we display strings inside of HTML, folks? Especially when they are problematic. Oh, whoops. Forgive me, that goes inside of function. There we go. How do we display A inside of here? Well, A is JavaScript. How do you display JavaScript inside of HTML? Curly parentheses, our best friend. Hey, there we go. Now reload. Lots of values defined but never used. It's okay. B, whoop, C, D. Boom, same display, cleaner execution. Oh, 
All right. Any questions? Awesome. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Let's not do that. All right, if you have no questions, believe it or not, we've done something pretty awesome. We're basically done with our first in-lab project for front end one, everyone watching currently and online. Make sure that you go ahead and do this on your own to completion. Why is that important? That is important because this project is pretty difficult. Um, this is not an easy project. It is the official React tutorial to follow and it gives you a good idea about all concepts. So if you're comfortable with everything that we do in this project, you'll be comfortable with React in general and you can really grow your knowledge through it. So please go ahead and do your best to make sure that you've got all the, got a hang about all this. All right. Till then, let's do this. What I've been trying to do is bring up a very particular error that pops up very once in a while. Okay, here's something cool that we've done here. We have made a list containing HTML. Insane. And now we can just go ahead and render this list. Remember, it's not fine. Oops. Okay. Reload, reload. Aha. Look at that. That warning right there. Each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Well, first of all, there's a lot of confusing things in there. What's a key prop? Why should it have uh, a unique key prop to begin with? So let's answer them one by one. What is a key prop? It's much like anything else. It's just uh, a prop that we can give here, which is some key here. Let's just assume we're going to give number. Um, why does it need to be unique and why does there need to be a key at all? Well, remember how I mentioned a, a little while before that React renders things selectively. Uh, React goes in and chooses uh, what to re-render based on what has changed. It doesn't re-render the whole page. It's the same idea. If one of these numbers somehow changes, React will go in and change only that row of our ordered list and nothing else, which is why it wants us to give it a key so that it can identify all of them uniquely and only re-render them as required, not all of them at, at once. It's just React trying to make your code more efficient on the browser. Okay, awesome. Any questions about that? Okay, one last thing for today. We are using classes. We've used classes in other languages. One thing that you see in classes a lot is inheritance. So is there inheritance in React? Thank God, no. There is no inheritance in React. So that is not something we need to learn. But there's a reason that there is no inheritance in React. It's because React maintains that information must flow downwards. It means that game should know things more so than board, board should know things more so than square, 
And if there's any information that game knows that board needs to know, game must pass it into board when it's calling board. A great example of this is the square right here. Square doesn't need to access the values board is holding to decide what it needs to display. Because those values are passed into square right here. So information trickles down from function or from component to component, from bigger component to smaller component. That is the basic idea behind React and that is the reason inheritance is no, not a thing in React. Okay. That is surprisingly it for today's class. Um, any notes that I have about today's class? Well, yeah. Again, complete this. Um, next class is all about thinking in React. We are done with all the basics of React and everything we need to use. So by the time next lecture rolls around, which is this Monday, uh, please spend some time, get a better grasp on the language and just overall prepare yourself. Okay, any final questions? Don't worry, then I'm gonna go ahead and